Hey, what's up? It's the Figure Hunter, and today we're going to talk about a re-review of the heart rate accuracy for the Amazfit GTR3 GTR3 Pro. So I have done the full in-depth review of the GTR3 GTR3 Pro. I love it as a watch, and I love some of the features and the ways they're expanding, some of the wellness and aspects therein. I really think Amazfit is expanding, and I also did a heart rate accuracy review, which found it to be relatively keeping up with the flow of the workout. And that is a fundamental thing because a lot of high intensity workouts, a lot of CrossFit workouts, as everything on this channel is, you can't keep up. So as I've been testing it and just wearing it longer because I enjoy it so much as a watch and I wanted to take a look at the training load aspects of it and the recovery time and the training effect uh, analysis of it, I also feel like I have to re-review and present new information about the heart rate accuracy to make sure I'm providing accurate information for the public. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. I'm doing, in tandem with this release, I'm doing a release on the training load, training effect, and recovery time estimates that the Amazfit GTR3 and GTR3 Pro is also providing so that we can have an awareness of a long-term use of both of all those analytical metrics, which are so fundamentally important for our workout analysis and, and just overall awareness. So with that, what we're going to do is we're going to dive into some charts, look at some of the accuracies or some of the challenges that I've come across. And what I want you to think of is that what you're seeing now is a replication of what I've seen on a consistent basis. It just sort of is all the same sort of similar stuff that I've seen over and over again. So this is a snapshot in, but a mirror of what you get on a regular basis. Let's take a look. All right, so here you have it. So we're just going to look at the heart rate accuracy, and we're just going to try to get an idea of how accurate it's being over a period of time. And we're going to look at how much time it's tracking in the different heart rate zones. So here you see a spike, and then you see the chest strap. So here it was lifting, and then it was three minute and a three minute EMOM of 400 meter runs and uh, chest bars. Then I did some light work and some ab work at the end. Here you have a crazy spike during the lifting period. It actually is not far off in the heart rate accuracy for the running period. Um, but here's the problem with the evaluation of the heart rate I'm seeing when it's off. I mean, obviously when it's on, it's on. 11 minutes in the red zone, in the red zone. 28 minutes in the zone four, which is 80% to 100% of maximum heart rate versus the chest strap, three minutes in the red zone, 23 minutes in the zone four versus 28 minutes. I mean, it is over peaking everything possible. So let's look at the next workout. So here, this is the, you know, Macefit GTR3, GTR3 Pro, because I have tested both. I'm using the GTR3 now. And you can see this peak is just, you know, it's almost hitting 190 in the middle there. And here's the actual workout. That is so sad. This is one of the things that made me think I've got to do a review because this is so far off the mark and we're talking like super boring super steady state and this is like oh man you're killing yourself so not accurate at all in the steady state you can see in the end it actually is spot on with what the workout was but for 50 to 60 percent of the workout was way off and you can see what happens five minutes in the red zone three minutes in the zone four when really there was no minutes in the red zone no minutes in zone four. So way inaccurate on the heart rate. So here you have, this is a double Metcon workout day. So there was basically like two kind of 20 minute Metcons or a 15 and a 20. And, um, you know, it over, it over projected the heart rate, but it did at least keep up with the tendency. And so you can see the actual, you know, um, chest strap, the accuracy, and you can see here, so this is the Macefit GTR3, 10 minutes in the red zone, 25 minutes in the zone four, versus two minutes and 24 minutes. So in both of these, it was overestimated. So instead of 10 minutes, it should be two minutes. Instead of 25 minutes, it should be 24 minutes. So in neither case was it accurate. Okay, so what do we see? Man, and sometimes like with that double Metcon workout, it kept up. It showed the flow of the workout. It picked up peak intensity zones, which I'm telling you, a lot of heart rate, um, optical heart rate sensors when worn on the wrist cannot keep up with. But there are so many reoccurring times. It'll be a pocket 
of a steady state workout where it'll just over, it'll overstrain the heart. I've found that if you over tighten the watch, it automatically thinks your heart rate has gone up 50 beats per minute. I mean, it's like, you know, it, but in that super boring steady state, I'm just going to get a sweat. I'm just going to sort of flush the system. It had me, you know, way off, which just flows into just a, a feeling of inaccuracy because you can't connect it to a chest strap. So as a watch, the GTR3, because I, I, you know, I actually tested and tried the GTR3 Pro and I just didn't use the speaker. I didn't find the extra screen bandwidth to be worthwhile. And so I just asked Amazfit if I could just swap it back for the GTR3 regular because I felt like that is the best economic value. As a watch, $179 and I happened to get it in the beginning. So I got the Amazfit earbuds with it which I just sort of equate this as $140, $130 watch now because of that. I feel like it's 100% worth the money because it is a fantastic watch for use during the day. It always connects to my phone. I always get my notification. I have been a Polar uh, watch user for a long time. I constantly have problems getting notifications clearly to, I constantly have problems getting it to sync with the with the phone and update the workouts and show the workouts on the app. The Amazfit DTR3 just works in all of the basic functions. It's beautiful. They have a great lineup of watch faces. They have great widgets. The you know the weather syncs in great. It is a it is a great day-to-day -day watch. But what I'm seeing is that the the accuracy is not consistent. There will be times when it's consistent. And please watch the review I'm releasing in tandem with this about the training load, training effect, and workout analysis, recovery time aspects that also come with it because it's an in-house algorithm, in-house design. But I just have to say, or have to get it out there to the public, that this is not a watch if you are only going to use this for workouts, for accurately tracking your CrossFit training. This is not a watch that you can use. It is a great watch for day-to-day, -day and it is an inexpensive watch with a super beautiful screen that actually functions really well, but not a great watch for workout accuracy, workout training, as you'll also see in the training load, training effect, and recovery time of review I'm going to do alongside this. So that is the figure, Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.